When I purchased the bulb, it came standard with a 1.5 inch focal lens. I bought the two and a half and the four inch optional, and I've used them once or twice, but I've never done an apples to apples comparison between the two and a half and the one and a half. And I just thought it was about time today on LaserNug. So I have a bit of an understanding of the differences between each lens, and I believe notwithstanding other things, you use it for different depths of engraving. For example, if you're engraving something that's one eighth inch versus something that's a half an inch, you're gonna need a different lens. I can't explain it to you much past that, but I'll put a link in the description. I believe it's a Thunder USA video, and they help to try to explain how each of those lenses operates differently. So today, we're gonna to grab some 1 8 inch Romark, just basic two color stuff. So I've got one platform, one type of material. And I'm also gonna grab a couple of wine tumblers. And I'm gonna try each of these lenses on each one of these tumblers to see what the difference might come up as. I'm very fortunate a friend of mine gave me his logo to try out today. And that's what we're gonna use for the experiment. A few things I've learned so far. First, most important thing, if someone's sending you design work or a logo, you need it in the highest or the largest file size possible. I had a bit of a trouble working with this logo. As you can see, it's a lot busier than mine, has a lot more aspects or details in it, and it also is colored, colored a little differently. When I first got the logo, he sent it to me in a really small file size. It was about 500 kilobytes, and I had a heck of a time trying to trace that image and get all of the details I needed in, because what kept happening is I would trace one part and it would lose the trace on other parts of the image at the same time. I eventually got back to him and he sent me another copy of it, but it was about one and a half to two megabytes. And that seemed to do the trick. It was much easier to trace, although I'm still not sure if I did a really great job on it. But we'll just take a moment here. Let me grab his file and we'll bring it in. And this is how that color logo comes into Lightburn. As you can see, there's a lot of detail in this logo. And in all fairness, I'm pretty new at it. I know I've got a lot more to learn as far as using the trace function, but I've got a little better with each time or each try. This is what it comes out looking. Just basic coming right out of the gate. And you'll see a lot of this stuff has the purple lines around it. So it looks like it's captured a lot of the stuff but there's also some detail in here you can see that's not captured, like the front grill on the tractor. So, and there's also little details up here, including part of the steering wheel is missing. So I started increasing the threshold and I just wanted to show you this if you haven't had much experience yet. As you increase the threshold, you'll notice once I got to 136, the entire background disappeared, all the purple left. If I click that threshold back down, you'll see it all came back. So I knew that was kind of my sweet spot for the threshold, but I also still wanted some detail around this grill in the front, at least a little bit, as well as part of these engine parts here. So I tried to play with my cutoff. And as I increase the cutoff, I'm trying to watch the rest of the logo to make sure nothing else disappears while I'm increasing it. And the more you increase it, at some point you'll see here, there we go. I drew it up to 38, and now I've got the entire grill outlined, which is great. I've got a little bit of stutter here on the bottom of the front axle. So if I drop my cutoff down just a little bit, I want to see if that's going to change anything for me. It looks like everything is still Got confidence, there goes the grill at 32. So I'll pop that back up to 33 on the cutoff and now you can see more of the detail came to life, including some of the controls in the brake pedal down below the hood of the tractor. So that's looking pretty good. I've got what appears to be reasonable detail on the tires. The steering wheel has now come to life for me, which is great. And it looks like I have not lost any other detail. I'd love to get these letters ROTL in there, but I'm not sure if I click from the 135. Yeah, so I can't go any further there. So if I go back down to 135, 
maybe increase my cutoff and see if it's going to have any negative effects from 33. Because I'd love to get those letters if I can actually get them. The challenge here is I'm losing detail on the back rear tire and I'm also losing detail on the front axle. So it appears to me with what little experience I have so far. Oh, there we go. I got the letters at 60, 62. But as I mentioned, I've lost detail on the rear tire. So I think what I'm going to do is get this back to 33. And I think we're going to have to go without those, those little letters because I want to keep the detail on the tires. And I think that's about the best I can do with my limited experience. So we'll click OK. If I move this aside, I'll just give you a side-by-side -side comparison. And there's what you see are the differences between the cut file or the engraved file and the original image. So let's get rid of that image. And we're going to run our test with the one and a half inch on my eighth inch row mark first. See what it looks like. Before we go any further with the logo, I needed to do a cut test because many of you know I've provided you settings for the 1 16th row mark, but this is 1 8th and I haven't cut it yet. So I'm going to use the same cut settings that I use for the 1 16th with the one and a half inch lens and I'm going to see if it gets through. And if it does, that's great. If it doesn't, I'll swap it to the two and a half inch lens and see if that gets through. Let's do this. Let's try the two and a half inch with the same cut settings. Still not through. 15 and 90% power, two and a half inch lens. Still not through, but now I've got a partial cut on the back of this 3M adhesive. I'm going to turn down the speed. 10 mils, 90% power, 2.5 inch lens. And there's the ticket. 10 mils, 90% power. So I imagine I could try it again at 12 or 13, but I'm through and I'm nice and I'm clean. So clean it fell right out. So I know that works for the 2.5 on what is the 1 8 inch thick row mark. Let's swap it back to a one and a half inch lens and see if it still goes through at the same settings. So that's kind of interesting. I actually honestly thought the one and a half was not going to make it, but so at 10 millimeters and 90% power with your air assist, both the one and a half and the two and a half is going to cut through your one eighth inch row mark. If I wanted to take the testing further, I could try it at, you know, I know at 15 millimeters per second, it wasn't cutting on either one. I could drop it down to 12 or 13 to try to fine tune it, so to speak, but I'm okay with the 10. And for you folks that were waiting and had asked in the comments, that'll be my cut settings for the 1 8 inch row mat because it's a nice clean cut. In fact, so clean, the piece just falls right out when you lift it. Now let's get the logo fired up. I'm gonna use the settings that I use for the 1 16th for the engrave. But of course, I'm going to change the cut settings to these ones today. We're going to cut it or engrave it first with the one and a half and then with the two and a half. Let's send it. One other question that people have asked is whether or not I use any air on my engrave. I actually don't. I, I never turn air on. I haven't done it yet for any type of woods, any type of materials, tumblers, including Romark. I don't turn the air on when I engrave, only when I cut. I'm all set up. I've got it in place, I've sized the logo and the only change I made is I put a, a ring around it just so I had a cut layer. I haven't done this before, we're doing it together for the first time. One and a half inch lens using my engraved settings and the new cut settings. So to clean this stuff, usually all I need is water and a rag, and it should wipe right up. 
and it did, but I do have a tiny little bit of black into the white here on the clouds. So I'm just gonna try and hit it with a little bit of uh, that Dawn power wash. I came out pretty nice. I still have a little bit of that black into the white areas of the clouds, but otherwise, oh, and a little bit here as well. So I'm gonna hit it with the magic eraser and see if I can get that out. So yeah, once again, the old magic eraser wins the day. I got it all out. There wasn't much, but interesting. The last couple of times I used this, I was just using it for doing words. Never got any black dust in there, but I've got a much more detailed engraving. So I guess that was a lot more dust. So I think I'm gonna try my new method. I'm gonna hit it with air first before I wipe it. Let's throw the two and a half inch lens in there, cut the same logo and see if there's any noticeable differences between the quality or the depth or any other attributes. That is definitely a much cleaner engrave. A lot less black dust or any type of residue or soot. But I'd be lying if I didn't tell you I had my hand on that stop button. I, uh, that was a lot of flaming and uh, flaring up. So that's definitely one difference between the lenses. I'm gonna clean it up, although it doesn't look like there's much to clean up at all. And then we'll take a look and I'll see if there's any obvious differences in the depth of the engrave or anything else. Came out super nice. You know, that's awfully clean just after the using the air gun. I'm just going to try to wipe it just gently without using the magic eraser because there's really not anything there for me to wipe off, at least visibly. Yeah, not much. Yeah, isn't that something? So let's compare the two. So the logo on the left was done with the 1.5 inch lens, the logo on the right, the 2.5. From just from finger depth, I can't really tell any discernible difference between the depth of the engrave on either one. I will admit though, and I'm not sure if it's just my eyes, but it appears that there's more of a, I guess what you might call a whiter white in the two and a half inch lens than there is on the one and a half. Obvious differences, as you guys saw, the engrave settings that I use with my one and a half work great virtually not a single flare-up in the entire engrave in fact no flare-ups but right out of the gate this logo with the two and a half inch was flaring up the whole time through the engraved portion from a cleanup perspective obviously helped a lot to use the air gun and once again that's just confirmed to me that from now on i'll be using that air pressure every time i do any engraving before i wipe a piece with any type of cleaner because that might also have something to do with how why this guy here appears to be much, much more of a deeper white than the one on the left. But either way, they turned out pretty nice. There's one big difference. Detail. Put the old glasses on and took a closer look. And here's the difference between the one and a half and the two and a half with the same engrave settings. What I didn't notice right off the bat until I was looking at it a little closer is that this tractor has tread marks on the rear and the front two tires. There's also a wiring harness that goes just underneath that opening in the hood. The shirt that the driver is wearing has some ruffles in the shoulder. And the exhaust pipes coming out the top of the hood are much better defined on the one and a half inch grave. When you look at the two and a half inch lens, all of those components I just mentioned to you are missing. It's just a clean, straight engrave without those details. I imagine there might be a few more in there I'm missing. It's still a beautiful engrave, but the finite details are missing from the two and a half. 
So I don't know if you could play with the settings and try to get that detail back, or if it's just because the focal lens or the, the type of lens, because the beams converge at a lower depth, I think you lose a little bit of detail. I don't know if maybe you could play with your uh, focus length or your focus depth or change the settings, but I believe that's our big difference, detail. If you're looking for the settings for the 1 16th Romar, I'll put the video up here above me. And now you've got some cut settings for the 1 8th piece. On the next video, I'm gonna run the exact same tests, but on some tumblers. I just wanna see if anything changes, recognizing that the tumblers will have a taper on them. And we'll see if there's a difference in the engraved quality. Thanks so much for hanging out today. If you're finding the channel helpful or you're enjoying the content, it'd be great if you could subscribe for me, like, share it with some of your buddies. Have a great week out there. Please be kind to one another. And I'll see you again right here. I'm Gord Potter, and you've been watching Laser Nug. Cheers. So today we're going to take my buddy's same logo, and we're going to test out the difference, if there is any, between using the one and a half inch lens and the two and a half inch lens on just some basic wine tumblers, powder coated.